This video lecture will look at research puzzles in political science. We will look at two parts of this. First, we'll look at the features of research puzzles, what they are and what they contain. And then secondly, we're going to go through and talk about two different types of research puzzles that we see in political science. So first, what do we mean when we say research puzzle? What is a research puzzle? Here we have a definition from Schwedler. She says that a research puzzle is a surprising circumstance, set of relations, condition, phenomenon, behavior, or outcome, for which existing knowledge does not immediately offer a means of comprehension. Okay, so with this big, long definition, I'd like to point out two parts of it. So first, she says surprising, right? So there's something here that goes against our expectations, some sort of condition, a phenomenon, whatever, something that we're seeing that doesn't fit our expectations. And the second part here is existing knowledge doesn't offer means of comprehension. So we're building on what existing knowledge we already have within political science theory and saying, well, what we're observing here doesn't actually fit that. So what are the components of a research puzzle? There are two parts to a research puzzle. The first, most obvious, is a statement of a, the research question. Um, so this is simply saying, what is the question that your study is going to answer that by the end of completing the entire research project, you'll have the answer to this study. But just stating the research question, first part, but it's not enough to get to a research puzzle because you also need the second part. The second part is the justification. Why do we care? So you need to show the reader that the study that you're talking about is actually something that really merits our time, merits resources to conduct, and is gonna be something that's going to build on existing knowledge and expand theory. So you can think of this as a reason that if you're applying for funding, why you might get a big donor to invest in your project and not another one. So there are two different ways of thinking about this sort of significance. First, it could be a theoretical significance. So what is the gap in the literature? Um, and how is your study going to fill this gap in the literature? How are you going to be building theory and expanding what we know in terms of political science theory, right? So what's a scholarly justification for what you're doing? But some projects also lend themselves to a second kind of justification, which is one where you have substantive significance. And you could say, well, does your study actually build our understanding of normative or policy concerns? Does it have real implications for the real world that it would be really valuable for us to have the answer to this research question? So as you develop your research puzzles, the important thing is that everyone has to do this, right? You have to have some sort of theoretical significance. And then some projects have a bonus of being able to point to substantive significance just because of the, the nature of their topic. Um, and so that's kind of a, an extra bonus if you can show that not only it's addressing a theoretical gap, but it's also um, helping us understand these important normative or policy issues. There are two types of research puzzles that we can think about. Um, and these are the two types that Schwedler develops in, in her 2013 piece. So the two types that we can think of, the first one is one where there's no previous explanation in the literature out there for um, the phenomenon that we're seeing. Something took us totally by surprise and we're trying to build up a new literature to explain this. So for an example here, you can think about the collapse of the Soviet Union. So in the 1980s, put yourself back in that, that position, the Soviet Union was one of the global superpowers. Um, and at the time, people just didn't think that the Soviet Union was on the brink of collapse. Um, people who studied the Soviet Union, Sovietologists, thought that the USSR is gonna continue for a long time. And so they didn't have existing theories about why communist countries would transition to democracy, how they would open their economies to capitalism, um, we were starting from new terrain here. And so there just wasn't this existing explanation. So we need to build up theories about these questions. A second kind of theory would be one where there's a surprising or unexpected outcome. 
This is one where you have theories that are out there, um, but they don't really match the case that you're looking at or the cases. There's something that is a divergence from the theoretical expectations. So here we can think about the example of the Chilean student movement, which uh, emerged in the early 2010s and 2011, and then on in the next couple of years. Um, so the existing literature, there is a massive literature within social movement theory, um, and there had been literature on Chile in particular that said that um, social movements there were weak, that they didn't have uh, conditions that enabled the emergence of social movements, and yet with the Chilean student movement, you see this massive movement that emerges, is able to sustain its influence, gains access to power. It goes against some of our expectations, but it's not that there wasn't a literature out there. So these are the two types of research puzzles that roughly you can um, lump political science studies into. Something where they're trying to build up new theories that didn't exist before, or something where they're trying to explain outcomes building on existing theories, but diverging in an important way.